probably heard it on the news, you've probably seen it on social media, maybe you've heard it from us in our last video, but a ring of fire pattern is going to set up across the eastern portion of the United States as we work into the last third or so of June and into probably the start of July as well, which begs the question, what actually is a ring of fire pattern? And no, we're not talking about Johnny Cash's song. I fell into a burning ring of fire. We're talking about a dome of heat that's going to set up and actually divert storms and storm clusters around that dome and lead to some areas becoming very hot, humid, and dry, and other areas getting a lot of storm activity. Let's first talk about what actually causes the ring of fire pattern. And it's all going to start with a sinking area of high pressure, air as it sinks will warm by compression, heat tends to expand and rise. And so if we take a look here at the setup, you're going to get a heat wave to develop here across the eastern portion of the country. It's under that red area. That is where the, the heat sets up. That's where your dome begins to develop and you get a high pressure there as well. It's around this high pressure, you get a circulation pattern, uh, it moves clockwise around the high pressure and those winds will ultimately allow for rain and storm opportunities to circulate around the area of high pressure. And that is ultimately what the ring of fire pattern is. It's simply just an area of thunderstorms that's going to be circulating clockwise around a massive area of high pressure. And again, in this case, setting up across the eastern portion of the United States. If we look at some model data right now, really the core of this setting up right across parts of the Tennessee Valley and into parts of the Ohio Valley. At times, it will migrate more into the northeastern portion of the United States, which means that these areas are going to be dealing with heat, and in some cases, notable heat. As this pattern initially begins to develop, we're looking at temperatures down in the deep south into the 100s, probably heat indices pushing the upper 100s, 109, 110 degrees at times. And then this heat will expand northward and we'll start to get more widespread upper 90s to 100 degree temperatures. In fact, we're looking at the potential for record breaking heat as we work into next Monday and Tuesday across parts of the Ohio Valley and then migrating into parts of the northeastern United States with temperatures getting into the mid 90s along the East Coast, including areas like New York City, Philadelphia, Boston, Washington, D.C. All of these areas going to be pushing record high temperatures as we work into the early to middle part of next week. And there's actually even some data that would indicate that uh, this forecast right now could even trend a little bit hotter. Instead of mid to upper 90s, we could be looking at upper 90s to low 100s for high temperatures as we go throughout the middle part of next week. Now, what does that mean in terms of precipitation? It means that the heavier rain and storm chances are going to be diverted around that heat and into parts of Texas. You're going to get a lot of Gulf moisture circulating because you have more of a, a southeast wind around this dome, and it's going to produce a lot of moisture into parts of Texas. Then those winds will circulate further up to the north and to the east, and you're going to get heavy rain and storm chances across parts of the Midwest, the upper Midwest, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, a big corn crop region, going to be hot, but also likely going to get good amounts of rain, while again, parts of the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valley stay rather dry. It's a period over the next seven to 10 days that if you were under the dome, you're probably going to dry out pretty quickly. You're not going to have a whole lot of relief in terms of moisture. The question then is what happens when this dome weakens? It won't necessarily set up persistently for 15, 20, 30 days at a time. You likely get it to set up for five to seven days at a time, and then you'll get some fluctuations with it. At times it will retract, it will weaken, and then it may try to expand again. It's as it retracts and it weakens a little bit, that is when you can set up a pattern that can favor what we call severe storm clusters or derechos. We talked about that in last week's video. It's when you get the weakening of the ring of fire pattern a little bit that you can get those severe storm clusters to ride from the northwest, southeast, across parts of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, and you can get those damaging wind events. This is a particular model that we're looking at for late next weekend, uh, the, the 22nd, 23rd, 24th of the month, and it could open the door for, again, the potential for severe weather opportunities. The upper level pattern looking very similar to how the composite 
of the last 10 derecho events in the Midwest and in, in the Ohio Valley in the summer months, what those ultimately look like. And so we're seeing similarities in the pattern that would indicate the potential for some kind of a front, probably some sort of a, a severe storm cluster as we work into next weekend, which is very much in line with our derecho threat map that we put out last week across parts of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and perhaps even the Mid-Atlantic, all related to the ring of fire pattern and what it is doing. It all goes back to that. Guys, we're going to have more of these updates as we go throughout the next several weeks, giving you updates on heat waves, on severe weather threats, and eventually on hurricane season because uh, the setup is there for a hurricane season to be one of the most active on record. We're also going to be updating our clients on ClarityWX.com, forecasting for them, giving them a heads up on what's to come, not only in the extended range, but in the short term as well. That's why we work with uh, events and baseball teams like minor league and major league baseball teams, piloting companies so they can get shipments in and out of ports along the Gulf Coast of the United States. We're doing those updates on a daily basis on our Clarity Weather platform. If it's something that we might be able to help you with or your business, feel free to give us a shout. Inquire at bamwx.com. Thanks guys.